We begin by praising Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and bearing witness that none has the right to be worshipped or unconditionally obeyed except for him. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his final messenger. We ask Allah to send his peace and blessings upon him, the prophets and messengers that came before him, his family and companions that served alongside him, and those that follow in his blessed path until the day of judgment. And we ask Allah to make us amongst them. Allahumma ameen. Dear brothers and sisters, there's something deeply profound about the way that the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam used to speak about his circumstances. And many times there's a connection between how we speak about things and how we think about things. And if we speak in a negative way, then our circumstances will almost always follow, even if they're beautiful. And that's why you could have two people with the exact same set of circumstances and one of them, if you ask them how they're doing, they will praise the good of their circumstances and another person will speak to you as if they're Ayyub salam, as if they have the worst life in the world and the most difficult uh, moments in their lives. Two people with the same circumstances, Ibrahim salam, the Prophet Ibrahim, when he visited his son Ismail salam, in Mecca, he visited him twice. And the first time Ibrahim salam, visited, he sees a wife of Ismail alayhi salam and asked her how she's doing and all she pointed to were the negativities, the hardships that they had. And then he comes back later on, and I'm paraphrasing the story, and finds that Ismail alayhi salam has married a more righteous woman in her place, asks about her circumstances, and she praises everything that they have, even though it is the exact same set of circumstances. So it's not about the circumstances, it was about how they were experiencing those circumstances and then speaking about those circumstances. And there is a connection between the two. So much so that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, and we often kind of brush over this very quickly, As for the blessing of your Lord upon you, speak of it. Say alhamdulillah for it. Thank Allah for it and be very conscious about how you speak about it. You know, when you take your sip of water and you say, Alhamdulillah, did you actually just internalize, Alhamdulillah, Alhamdulillah for the sip of water. Thank you, Allah, for the sip of water. There's something very powerful about that. That is a tahadduth bi ni'matillah, speaking about the ni'mah of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. There's another hadith that we often quote partially, and I wanted to just focus on the last part because it's very profoundly connected to this and get to the person of the Prophet ﷺ first and how he dealt with this. The Prophet ﷺ said, look to those who have less than you, not to those who have more than you. Why? Because that will make you more content with what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. Stop looking at those who have more than you, look to those that have less than you. And the last word, part of that hadith, in some narrations, is وَلَا تَزْدَرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ أو وَلَا تَزْدَرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Do not belittle the blessings that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. Meaning one part of the hadith is what you're looking at. The other part of the hadith is how you're talking about things. وَلَا تَزْدَرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Don't belittle, don't use words that belittle a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has given to you. And this speaks to the small things in life, as well as the large things in life. This speaks to our negative self-talk and positive self-talk. This speaks to how we interact with our families. This speaks to how we interact with our communities. This speaks to optimism and pessimism. This speaks to all of those different things. وَلَا تَزْدَرُوا نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ عَلَيْكُمْ Don't you dare belittle a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. So how does that start with the Prophet Muhammad first? I want you to just think about this hadith and sit with it for a bit. مَا عَابَ النَّبِيُّ صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ طَعَامًا قَتْ The Prophet ﷺ never once criticized food that was on his plate. He never criticized a morsel of food that was on his plate. Now if you sit for a moment with that and think about it, this man ruled how much of the world? صَلَّى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمَ Power prestige, and think about our own lives. If you've gone through hard times and good times, you get a little bit more selective with your blessings, selective with your food. You rarely find people that eat to, to function and eat to live criticizing their food. The bread was overcooked today, the bread was, <laughs> no, no. But for us, we start you know, doing Yelp in our heads on every single plate of food that we eat, right? Reviewing everything that we eat. The Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, ma'aba ta'amun qat, 
Do you know how amazing that is? That he never once pointed to a flaw in his food. He never once said, it's too salty. I don't like it. I didn't enjoy this. Not once did he ever criticize his food. Something that sounds so small. But how hard is it to practice? When's the last time you criticized your food? It might have been lunch before you got here, right? Think about that. Despite his position, whether it was a, a, a host from the outside of his home, or whether it was what his spouse put forward, whether it was someone who was from the poorest of society, or someone who was from the elite of society, if you put a garment in front of the Prophet ﷺ, if you gave him a shirt, or if you put a plate in front of him, he would never point out a flaw in it. He would simply be grateful for it. And subhanAllah, look at the power of how this transforms things. We just finished speaking about Jabir ibn Abdullah عنه, and a story that he had with the Prophet وسلم, where he said he grabbed me by the hand and he took me to his house so we could eat together. And all they had in his house were some dried pieces of bread. They dumped them on the ground in front of him and the Prophet وسلم, said, is there anything to dip the bread in? They said, you know, the only udum, the only dip we have is al-khal, just some vinegar. The Prophet said, ni'm al-udum. What a great dip vinegar is. I mean, just right away. He didn't, he didn't belittle it. He didn't say, oh, you know, I wish we had some honey. No, ni'm al-udum. I love vinegar. Put the vinegar in front of us. Let's dip the vinegar. And Jabir said, I started loving vinegar too. And then Talha radiallahu anhu narrates from Jabir radiallahu anhu said, I started loving vinegar too. And then the narrator from Talha says, I started loving vinegar too. Because it was a mindset. It was a shift. This is good. Alhamdulillah. Allah put something to dip our bread in. That's a mindset. That is a tahadduth bi ni'matillah. To speak of a blessing of Allah. Wala tazdaru ni'matullah. Don't belittle it. Don't be like, oh man, this is dry. It's old. It's this. It's that. No. Alhamdulillah. It's a blessing. And I'm pleased with it. Alhamdulillah. And if that's with the small things, what about the big things? Right? What about the people in our lives? What about the circumstances in our lives that are far more consequential than the bites of food that we have? The Prophet ﷺ said, speaking about marriage, since everyone likes to quote uh, the other person's hadiths on them, husbands and wives, there's actually an implementation of this hadith for both, and it's almost identical, subhanAllah. The hadith in Sahih Muslim, لا يفرك مؤمن مؤمنا إن كريها منها خلقا رضي منها آخر. The Prophet ﷺ said, let not a believing man despise a believing woman, meaning his wife. Don't talk your wife down. إن كريها منها خلقا. If he doesn't like something about her, a quality that she has, she might have a certain thing that he doesn't like about her, رضي منها آخر. Then he likes something else about her. Speak about that thing. Don't speak about the thing you don't like. Focus on what you like and extol it. No one's perfect. And you're not perfect either. And the Prophet ﷺ said about women to men. He said, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, Innahun Yakfurn, that they show ingratitude when a husband makes one mistake and she says, Ma ra'aytu minka khayran qat. I never once saw anything good from you. You've never done anything good. So she denies everything and focuses on the fault. Now, subhanAllah, ma ra'aytu minka khayran qat, like I've never done anything good? Fine, I'm not going to do anything then. The attitude shuts off both sides, right? Well, you're never going to be happy and you're never going to be happy, so why even try now? Trying to live up to anything because your standards are impossible. Both sides are operating from the same spiritual disease, by the way. Tazdaru ni'mat Allah. You're belittling the blessing of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allah blessed you with a quality. Allah blessed you with an action in that other person. You fail to extol it, and you extol the bad quality. The bad quality dominates them, and you're stuck with it. Who suffers? You do. When do you see the Prophet ﷺ belittling Aisha radiallahu ta'ala anha? When do you see him belittling before that Khadija radiallahu anha? Where do you see him doing that, sallallahu alayhi wa He didn't used to do that. Don't look at the thing that's wrong and extol it. No. Extol the blessing. Extol the good thing. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will make it more dominant in your life, even just through your perspective, through your perception. And what made the Prophet so amazing in this regard is that even in the most bleak circumstances, he had something positive to say. Sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Hudaybiyyah. They're literally facing a potential massacre. And Quraysh sends 
Suhail ibn Amr radiallahu anhu becomes Muslim later on and a great companion but at that time he was the chief negotiator and the Sahaba see him and go oh God Suhail ibn Amr and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi smiles and he says Sahlu amruna his name is Suhail which means easy Allah just made our affairs easy for us something is good something good is going to come out of this just look at his name his name is Suhail his name is easy so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala surely is giving us a sign that he's about to send ease our way that's a tafa'ul. That's looking at things and trying to see something to praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala for. Finding the good and praising it. That's not being naive. That's not being reckless. The Prophet said, oh, no more, no need to do anything else. No, that's seeing something good and saying, alhamdulillah, there's something there. Alhamdulillah. There's something in the small morsel of food. There's something in the major tragedy. Something there I can find and praise. When you constantly have that negative lens, you're only messing it up for yourself and you're gonna mess it up for people around you as well because negativity is contagious. And SubhanAllah, what we find often is how that translates generationally, by the way. If, you know, the next generation is listening to their parents constantly putting down the blessings of Allah upon them. Then you give your six-year-old an iPhone 10. I don't know why, but you choose to give your six-year-old an iPhone 10. And the six-year-old, you know, say, oh, you got an iPhone 10? Well, you know, yeah, but my friend has a 12. They immediately go to that. <laughs> You're belittling a blessing Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed to you. Don't do that. And that transitions. Transitions from generation to generation because it becomes contagious. And with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, look how contagious his gratitude was. Because if he's grateful for that, who am I to not be grateful for it? If he's grateful for that, Vinegar, who am I not to be grateful for it? Because he deserves more than I ever deserved, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And if he's pleased, I too am pleased. وَلَا تَزْدَرُوا نِعْمَةَ Allah. Do not belittle a blessing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has bestowed upon you. وَأَمَّا بِنِعْمَةِ رَبِّكَ فَحَدِّثْ Speak, reflect on the blessings of Allah in your life, with yourself and with the people around you, and make that contagious that we say, alhamdulillah, and do not point out flaws. Make it a habit, make it a habit. You know, a lot of people will say, well, this is behavior. I've, I've been like this. I always go to the negative. I immediately resort to the negative. It's not something that can change overnight. That's true. But you know, when the Prophet ﷺ says to us to even focus on the small things, the, the daily things, slowly that change can come, inshaAllah ta'ala. Slowly that change can come, where you even adjust yourself to say, alhamdulillah, for something that is very, very, very small and something that other people would be little. So catch yourself and try to adjust yourself in that way to always say Alhamdulillah for the small good that you can find even if it doesn't seem that great at the moment. And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala might change that good to great and that might then color the other circumstances and allow for other things to be granted to you. If you are grateful, I will increase you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us first and foremost in iman. May Allah increase us in faith. May Allah increase us in certainty. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala increase us in perspective. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in increase us in our ability to see blessing so that when he blesses us, it becomes a blessing for us in the hereafter as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the grateful and the patient. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us from the thankful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us when we belittle any ni'mah that he has given to us, especially the ni'mah of al-Islam. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala never make us amongst those that belittle the blessing of faith that he has given to us. May Allah never allow us to look at someone who has a blessing of this dunya and envy them while he has given us the greatest blessing of this deen. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us on that ni'mah of deen until the moment that he takes us. Allahumma ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullah li wa lakum wa li sa'ar al-muslimin fastaghfiru innahu al-ghafur rahim. Alhamdulillah, salatu wa salamu ala rasulillah wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wala. Allahumma kfir al-mu'minin wa al-mu'minat. والمسلمين والمسلمات الأحياء منهم والأموات إنك سميع قريب مجيب الدعوات اللهم اغفر لنا وارحمنا واعف عنا ولا تعذبنا ربنا ظلمنا أنفسنا وإن لم تغفر لنا وترحمنا لنكوننا من الخاسرين اللهم إنك عفو كريم تحب العفو فاعف عنا اللهم اغفر لوالدينا رب ارحمهما كما ربونا صغارا 
ربنا هب لنا من أزواجنا وذرياتنا قرة أعين وجعلنا للمتقين إماما اللهم صر إخوان المستضعفين في مشارك الأرض ومغاربها اللهم أهلك الظالمين بالظالمين وأخرجنا وإخواننا من بينهم سالمين عباد الله أن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعذكم لعلكم تذكرون فاذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعماء يزد لكم ولا ذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون وأقيم الصلاة